20 years ago when, when we made uh, the documentary Heart of the Dragon, it was really in response to newspaper articles that sort of announced, you know, a guy in a wheelchair uh, streaming through China with a million people meeting him in Tianjin, and Beijing. So as filmmakers, uh, and, and it became pretty obvious that there was a story there. The real thing that Rick had to overcome was his inability to trust anybody. As a young man, he was, you know, he was, he was disabled by a, by a drunk driver. Um, he uh, had trouble at home for a variety of reasons that were well beyond his control. He struggled in a small town where people loved him, but there was no real opportunity for a guy in a wheelchair. So all the things that he knew as a young man of 16 or 17 years old were gone from him and he had to rebuild his life. So, so starting as a young man, trust were huge issues in his life. Now he's in the movie 25, 6, 7 years old and he's accomplished a great deal, but never really by trusting anybody, always by pushing very hard himself. So here you have a story of a guy who, who doesn't really need to trust anybody. And, and, and logically you would think it wouldn't serve him very well to trust anybody. Again, because it had, it had worked in his, against him previously. But on the wall, something pretty powerful happens to him wherein he sees the people he loves around him in the place of great distress. And he understands that they need him emotionally more than, than, than they can say. And as he helps them emotionally overcome their issues, and he helps them physically in many ways, he also comes to realize that if he goes on on this journey alone, because he can physically, that, that the people who love him are going to be left behind. So he, he has to make the biggest decision of his life. Do I achieve what I know I can physically? Or do I hold myself back because people who love me need me? And we decided that it was more important that he overcame his psychological uh, dragon than his physical dragon. You know, each of us is faced with uh, enormous struggles in our lives, some physical, some emotional, financial. Uh, and, and, and Rick's was, was physical, or so you think. And then you get into the story and you realize it was far more psychological than it was physical. Not having legs that worked is an enormous difficulty. But not having a, an emotional connection to those people around you is a far greater disability. So our story really is about overcoming yourself. And the Great Wall historically, at least in Mao's words, the best that we can figure out, the, the, the rendering of them anyway, it says that there's a Chinese saying that to overcome yourself, to be a hero, you must make the Great Wall. All of his life, Rick Hansen wanted to come to the Great Wall, maybe because his grandfather told him stories, maybe because he heard about it in school. But for whatever reason, he always wanted to come to the Great Wall. So for him, coming to the Great Wall was, a, was, was an enormously symbolic gesture to himself, to, his, to the people he loved. So when he got here, he realized very quickly that, that physically he could probably get up this wall with some help. Psychologically, he could never do it without the help of the people around him. So this story is really about overcoming yourself. We thought the best way to tell the story was to try and find the Chinese cultural icons that told stories in and of themselves, that required no explanation from us. Shadow puppets were an obvious one. This beautiful classic instrument played by a woman who was blind. Um, it was so evocative. And, 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 the, and the lion dance are all very old kind of ideas that for thousands and thousands of years have basically been the same. So we thought rather than 
try and interpret any of these things ourselves. We would simply use them as a, as a, as a backdrop to telling our story. And if you could hear them and see them and feel them, and without the filter, our filter, but just really being there, that the story would be more authentic. Because Rick Hansen is only, in our story, and perhaps in truth, he was only a, a hero because of China. Without China, without the Great Wall, without the simplicity of, and the antiquity of this culture, there would be no man in motion, or at least not the man in motion that so many people in the world know. Well, Rick was very, uh, as was his wife Amanda, uh, gracious in the approach that they took. You know, we all, I guess, can appreciate how difficult it would be to give anyone unfettered access to your life, especially a life 20 years ago when you were kids and, and there were different experiences that, that were, you saw the world in different ways then than you would now. So he was very generous in them and gracious in their manner in which he extended us the opportunity to have the rights. And, and his participation really was limited to that of a kind of an observant uncle who, although he had no legal or contractual uh, influence on the story, he had a lot of moral suasion because we knew that we didn't have to please him uh, as much as we had to tell the truth. And um, so we were always aware, both then and now, that a number of issues had to be dealt with pretty specifically in terms of the obstacles people faced in their lives. So in that sense, he was really your uncle that you're trying to uh, make sure uh, that they understand you're doing the right thing more than you know, the principal of the school saying it has to be this way.